Good morning, guys. It's me again, Ford here. This t I just want to show you today um, a speed painting. I made this painting for my sister for Christmas, and I filmed every minute of it. We are we are already thirty minute thirty seconds into an eleven minute video. However, <laughs> uh, contrary, I mean this may be surprise you, but it actually took me longer than eleven minutes to make. How is that possible? You ask. When the video is clearly only 11 minutes long, which by the way, only 11 minutes is not actually what I should have said because that's kind of a long video. So if you stick around that whole time, kudos to you. Just just kudos to you. Chillax and spend some time with Ford here. Uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a good morning, a good evening, a good afternoon, whenever it is that you're watching this video. But anyway, to the point. Uh, no, but I, since I did record the whole process of this video, um, I know how long it took me. I usually just guesstimate. But according to my recordings and my math, which is variable, I mean, it's not. My math is not the best. I don't, I don't like math a lot. Anyway, regardless of that, I tried the math. I crunched some numbers, and it turns out this took me 168 minutes and 34 seconds, roughly, to paint. Now, that's excluding the, the time I spent thinking about what I was going to paint, which actually took quite a while, maybe longer than it took to paint. I'm not sure. I mean, I didn't just sit and think about it all day, but sometimes I, you know, for me, the hardest part about drawing or painting is deciding what to draw or paint, which is sad because I like to do it, but like, meh, you need to have that creative energy to like get into a project. And sometimes deciding what the project is, is just exhausting, but I figured it out. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, if we, if we convert these numbers, that 168 minutes into more useful time, you might come up with this number, or the following number, two hours and 48 minutes. Um, that math could also be wrong, but <laughs> go figure. So anyway, all in all, I think this took me um, two hours and 48 minutes to paint. So almost three hours. That's not bad, actually. It's not bad. Um, and here we're already getting into it. I sped it up quite a bit. Um, in fact, oh, by the way, by the way, I didn't say this at the beginning. If you're still listening to me, like I said, that's good on you. If you're not, if you don't want to listen to me, just mute me and put on some music. That's what I did when I showed this video to my sister. I had uh, a couple songs playing in the background. They were copyrighted songs, so I can't play them for you here. But if you go to Spotify or YouTube, you can play them in the background while you watch me paint. If you want my, my suggestions, I used uh, uh, Rachel Platten's A Thousand Ships. How, uh, how appropriate, huh? I also used Surfing USA from the Beach Boys. Also appropriate. And also, I'm using that word a lot. And furthermore, <laughs> I used... Uh, oh, it's coming on now. If everybody had a notion... Okay, sorry. I... Um, I'm listening to it in my headphones while I'm recording this, which is mostly a motivating thing. Music motivates me and gets me excited and pumped up. Also distracts me sometimes. What were they saying? Oh, the third song I used was Ships in the Night by Matt Kearney. So you can put those songs on while you listen to this. Watch me, I mean. Um, if you're still listening to me, uh, you're in luck because I've got a joke for you. What hap... Okay, hang on, hang on. Are you ready? Are you ready for the joke? Okay, what happened when a red ship and a blue ship collided? Guess, guess. Okay, okay. The sailors were all marooned. <laughs> but marooned, because like red and blue. Uh, I don't know. I think that's how the joke goes, but I'm not sure red and blue make maroon. Make more of a brown, don't they? I guess maroon's kind of brownish colors. I don't know, some artist I am. Um... So, also, so that's how long it took me. Um, music, where, where were we? Oh yes, I learned some things about painting when I did this. Apparently, I, I, in this, in this uh, project I used watercolor. Nope, that's not true. I used oils. Uh, and I, as you can see, I have a thing of water. It's a clear plastic container, which I don't know what I was thinking. You don't use water with oils. What? Science, come on. Uh, 
no, th- there's a flaxseed thing, like a paint thinner that I used, which which was nice. I'd never used that before. Um, so I lost my train of thought. I saw a hand in the camera, and it completely distracted me. Oh, okay, okay. So paint uh, oils take a long time to dry, and you and that's common knowledge, right? I should have figured. Um, so when I started painting this, I started with the blue sky, and I, of course, I need this bright orange sunset. And we kind of missed that process because I was talking about other stuff. But I try and go from blue to yellow in the same sitting, and when it's the blue hadn't dried yet, and I mixed yellow with it, it started looking green, which was disgusting. It was not what you want in your sky and quite frustrating so I just kind of stopped painting let the blue dry actually that's not what I did that's what I should have done I should have let the blue dry and then paint the yellow on top of it but but I uh, I just kept painting and I just added lots of more yellow like pile it on so you can't see that it was changing colors so, you, so there's a little bit of green in there if you look closely but don't uh, pretend it's a nice sunset without green in it um Also the clouds. Clouds are hard to paint. Uh, Right now they look really flat, which is kind of... uh, I was trying to mimic it just out of the picture. Oh, the picture, by the way, was uh, my own photograph that I took when I was uh, in Nevis. I served served an Elias mission there. Uh, Actually, I was on Puerto Rico, but I had a chance to be on this little puny island. And there was this boat that just sailed across the horizon when I was by the... by the... kind of by the beach. And good thing I have my camera on me because I snapped a beautiful picture of this silhouetted bow. Anyway, in the picture, I, like, I tried to replicate it from the picture and it turns out that if I painted the clouds how they look in the picture, they didn't look good on the painting. I realized that later and I go back and like add more highlights to them and it makes it look better. <laughs> look, <laughs> I erased my bow. Yeah, I didn't like it how it turned out. Um, it was fuzzy. Um, like when you when you when you paint, if you have a lot of oil, if you have a lot of paint on your on your brush, you can kind of get on pretty thick. But if you start like scraping it or whatever, it just gets fuzzy, and that's not what I wanted for my boat. So I was going to repaint it later. I also wanted to have more light shining through there. So as you can see, it's a it's a process, trial and error. Uh, this camera jump there. I did this over the course of several days. This was not a one day thing. Which I think is a good way to paint. Um, you just take a break, take some steps back, and you know do something else so that when you come back you have fresh eyes and you can look at the painting again and have a new perspective on it. I think that's that kind of was helped that kind of helped me do better on it. Because I because I did that. I'm, I'm glad I didn't do it on one day. See there, now I'm adding like highlights in the clouds and they make them look a little more lively, don't you think? I like that better. I do. It's not how it looks in my photograph, but it looks better on a painting. Speaking of painting, water, <laughs> speaking of painting, no, what else were we speaking of for? Uh, water is hard to paint. I don't know how to do it. I tried and I think I got close, but if you have any tips on how to paint water, feel free to share. See, what do you think? That was a clever idea, wasn't it? I decided to draw and then cut out a stencil of the bow so that I could have crisp, solid edges, which I think worked pretty good. Um, ignore the scrape on the back of my hand. I think that came from rock climbing. My roommates took me to rock climb, and I'm no professional. I got scraped up a little bit, but... That's how you know you, uh, you're hardcore. I digress. So, again, if you've made it this far, you're in luck because it's time for another joke. Dun-dun-dun. Are you ready? What do you call a fake noodle? I don't know, Ford. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. <laughs> Impasta, <laughs> because it's like pasta, but imposter. <laughs> uh, but in sh- for it, when you explain the jokes, it ruins them. <laughs> but when you laugh at yourself, you know, jokes are mostly about delivery. And I found that when you laugh at your own jokes, it, it's like the deli- it just makes the delivery. Like that's all you really need to do is laugh at your own jokes. And 
And whether they actually thought the joke was funny, you'll get a laugh, which will make you be feel better. Oh boy. So look there. Uh, I, I, that's another tip I learned just out of the blue. Put the paper on it so you can trace a, a flatter horizon. My horizon wasn't very straight. Um, I thought it would work better if I put more dark on the water. Again, that's not really how it looked in the in the photograph, but for the painting's sake. So what do you guys think? Do you like it? I think we're getting close to the end here. Yep, I'm putting on the initials, which is something I forget to do sometimes, but I remember to sign it. And there it is. Hey, thanks for joining me. You watched this entire speed painting. Now go out there and try something yourself. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. And re oh, and remember, uh, uh, subscribe, like this video, share this video, watch my other videos. Yeah, peace out.